You know what? We'll, we'll do a we'll do one for old time's sake. YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here. <laughs> Some people wonder why I don't say it. Yeah, I don't know. I just I done it for so long. I got tired of it. You know. But whatever, I'll throw one in for you all every now and then if it really means that much to you. And for those who it makes you cringe, don't worry. I'm trying to branch out a little. Hey, so I'm back, as you can see, in another battle. And I'm going to let this one play as we explain it. This is um, a ladder replay sent in from Lord Oblivion. I really want to be playing more ladder. I, I'm going to have to dedicate some time to do it. I want to challenge myself to continue to try and play some semi-competitive multiplayer in this game. Because I just feel like it's a fun aspect of it. And Lord Oblivion sent me some replays where um, he had been playing a lot of games as vampire counts. And I appreciate him posting this in the Discord. I'm not going to go on a big Discord thing. I I've been there. <laughs> He's been posting them on the Discord. And I appreciated getting a chance to watch it. And I think you all have some fun with these too. Uh, vampire counts are a fun faction. You know, they they've been a solid faction really since the release of the game. There may have been a few times where... Power creep gave them some trouble, but honestly, I don't know if there's been a time where the vampires were a bad faction. And at times, the, the vampires were an absolutely OP faction. Anyway, let's take a look at what's going on. There's going to be Luther versus Vlad, and I just want to kind of show you what's going on here. Actually, let's let's slow it down just for a minute so I don't miss a critical part. Luther was being supported by two deck droppers with handguns and some fell bats, and he's also got another death streak terrorgeist over here. And the idea probably was that they would basically pick apart the leadership or the key units of the vampires and then force them ultimately into a bad fight in the woods against a bunch of cheap pole arms. So this makes a lot of sense. They even have a gunnery white and a wizard back there to help support. Um, so there's a lot of support units there for the vampire coast. This army makes, makes total sense against the vampires. They can't do a whole lot against you in the air unless they go full-blown aerial assault. And in this case, they didn't. And so the vampires are struggling. Anyway, let's take a look at this, because uh, there was a cool piece of this engagement. Look at Luther here. He got hit by the, the Master of Beguilement from Vlad, which really prevents him from doing a lot of damage in this fight against the bats, which then becomes super handy because this deck dropper ends up having to face the fell bats who are being healed and that Luther can't support against. And you're going to see a fell bat end up getting great mileage against a deck dropper and Luther Harkon all at once. Now, on the other flank, without that support, you can see how quickly the bats disintegrate. Now, of course, there was enemy fell bats here, but uh, yeah, this is going to be an interesting way to take a unit of deck droppers out of the battle early. Let's look at the whole vampire army real quick. We do have the Chillgeist and the Feasters in the Dusk, um, which uh, this is going to be a regiment of renowned Hex Wraith that slows things around it, and then the Feasters are a, a vanguard deploy. Um, yeah, Crypt Ghoul. So we've got several units of zombies up front, then there is a line of Grave Guard, and then more Crypt Ghouls supporting the flanks, a Corpse Cart. Now remember, Corpse Carts um, give Rigor Mortis, which I believe uh, increases attack and I think is a defense? Vigor Mortis, sorry, not Rigor Mortis. <laughs> it is vampires though, so hey, can you really blame me on that one? Vigor Mortis. Yeah, attack and defense. That's a big deal when you're using crappy units or just vampire infantry in general. Vampire infantry kind of sucks. Now let's go look at some of the vampire coast over here. They're being attacked by the chill guys. Not a great attack by the chill guys, but not a huge worry here either unless they get hit by some magic. Um, these pole arms and other units won't really do a whole lot to them. The deck here, summons was used to help slow down the feasters and shoot them in the back. So the feasters actually pretty good unit, but gets itself in too deep. And it's not going to be able to do too much here. The Chillgeist are forced to retreat. And really, if you take a look at what Luther's up to, see a unit there crumbling. That was the deck droppers, I believe. Um, Luther is basically trying to deal a lot of damage to Vlad right now. He's just firing at will, so it's a bit of a waste of ammo here. Uh, but Vlad has been the target since this battle begun. And I want to show you, like, uh, it doesn't look like he's even been injured. But he has. He's healed off almost half of his uh, hit point reserve. So they're doing a lot of damage to Vlad, but Vlad also has a Von Karstein ring, which gives him 90% damage resistance. I believe it's a one-time use. So the vampire counts are up an interesting challenge here, right? If they're not careful, Vlad will get killed. They're going to have to be, um, you know, very, very meticulous with their units. There's a very good chance here that... Vlad could have been killed and then enough ammo left over to do a lot of damage elsewhere. When the vampires lose their leadership, it gets rough. It gets rough real quick. And that's obviously what this army was meant to prey upon. 
And I, I think one of the things that I wanted to point out in this battle, because it is getting underway here, we're about to get a proper fight, so I'll let you all watch this while I talk about it. Um, so yeah, we're going to get a nice proper fight in the woods here. <clears throat> and when you're playing as the vampires, you got to keep your leadership alive. Every, everybody knows this, unless you're brand new to the game. And if you're brand new to the game, guess what? Vampires need to keep their leaders alive. This is the truth for all undead factions, plus a couple of others. You really can't fight effectively without a leader. And Vlad is an interesting choice in this regard, because he heals so quickly. Um, he can tank a ton of damage, and he ragdolls if he gets hit by big units, which makes it harder for them to just absolutely zerg him to death. And especially when he gets proper support, you can see that Vlad's traveling in a pack of Graveguard and other chaff. This makes it very difficult for him to be taken down, and uh, just makes him an overall, like, interesting choice. Interesting choice. Now, if if the vampire player hadn't brought the two Felbat units, imagine what would be going on right now. Both deck droppers would have just been unloading at will into Vlad. And he very well could be dead right now. I mean, we'll take a look. He's already suffered massive damage. Um, so, yeah. Felbat. Just that Felbat made a huge difference because it took a deck dropper off the battlefield with almost all of its ammo. And in this particular case, that's huge. Because uh, remember, the Gunnery White can give him more if he stays alive. Give him even more ammo. It's absolutely insane what can be done. And you can see that the Vampire Coast player is patiently sitting in the air and doing what damage he can. Now, the bad thing for him is, is that the Vampire Army is much more competent in melee. And with all the Grave Guard and the Crypt Ghouls, these uh, Vampire... Or, sorry, the... Uh, the zombie deckhand mob with pole arms is going to be overwhelmed. It's just a matter of time. So Luther and his units need to do their damage now. You can see that they're trying to. There was a wind of death there. I do believe that actually came from... It didn't come from Vlad, I don't believe. I think that came from the uh, vampire fleet captain. So it was attempting to do some damage to the vampires. It was an odd direction to pick when definitely if there's going to be a wind of death here was the line right through here and could have potentially done a lot of damage so I think a bit of a mistake by the Vampire Coast player but I thought this was an interesting replay in the sense that um, the army here that was picked by the Vampire Coast was definitely meant to be an annoying kite and Lord Snipe type army and I'm not trashing that player this is the type of thing you're going to have to deal with in quick battle you can get mad at it you can say it's not honorable. <laughs> you can choose not to play in quick battle because it's what you'll get. But this is what you will get. And regardless of your feelings of it or anything else, if you're going to play against it, I love the fact that the Vampire Counts brought a couple of fell bats. Such a cheap unit, but they were actually so critical here. And the fight's not over yet, obviously, but if it would already be over if those fell bats hadn't been there and then hadn't been supported properly to do what they did. Look at this deck dropper with handgun. It's finally out of ammunition. These fell bats uh, and Luther. Luther still has some ammunition, but where he chose to have his troops fight in the woods is actually now kind of a detriment because it was giving missile uh, block to uh, the uh, vampire counts. Now there is going to be a big, drawn out, knocked down slugfest here of Luther Harkon and his Death Streak Terror Geist as well as his flyers, to try and kill what's left of the Vampire Counts. And it's going to be challenging with the Hex Wraiths around. They slow units, and they're going to make it very painful. You can see that Luther, not being ignored, but somewhat ignored here, the Hex Wraiths are going for these other leadership elements from the Vampire Coast. So, like, this is the Fleet Captain, Lore of Vampires. Trying to get rid of these units because it's just one more piece of support that they can take out. Uh, from under Luther. Plus, if they get rid of all the ground units, it's going to force all of the land unit, or sorry, air units to land. Probably going to see another summon here. Is that what that is? No, no, this is just an ability. Yeah, sorry, there's just a, there was special, like a curse or some kind of ability going off here. I can't exactly figure out which unit it's on. Um, but in any case, yeah, this is just, this is the kind of fight you end up with two undead factions. So, yeah, lessons here. Let's let's think about Lord Oblivion's pick. His pick was pretty well varied. He had a mix of infantry, some fast, some slow, some chaff, some heavy. He had a lord that was tanky, 
that has some magic to come along. You had the Master Beguilement, which is a nice debuff to an enemy lord or hero, or any unit where you have to apply it. You had a couple of fell bats for some mobility and, you know, potential to tie down artillery or other units like that, so that was a, a nice balanced play. And a balanced vampire army can honestly be pretty dangerous sometimes if it's used well. And I'm not saying that you can't make a focused vampire army that's really good that won't work. It, it can. But sometimes the vampires are a little more tricky to deal with when they bring these uh, somewhat varied armies. Because if your opponent sells out, and, and again, this is not me being mean, I'm just, just casting the battle. The Vampire Coast player here sold out to uh, Hero or Lord Snipe, Monster Snipe, whatever you want to call it, right? They, they sold out to Snipe. That's what their army is built for, and it's pretty good at it. Um, uh, you know, it's because they've got a couple of tear guys for anti-large damage. They had a whole bunch of missiles and flyers uh, to keep those missiles safe. Their, their army was definitely built to Snipe. And because of that one-sidedness, in this case, the balanced vampire army got a hold of all their chaff infantry and made very short and easy work of it. Um, there was a wind of death there that I think could have been a lot more valuable for the vampire coast. But regardless, their one-sided army pick, which I'm not, again, not saying is a bad idea, just saying in this case, it's not working out well because now they find themselves in a very tough position where Luther and his Terrorgeist, along with some deck droppers, are trying to defeat some pretty varied infantry. And I mean, just imagine trying to take out a couple of units of Grave Guards supported by a Corpse Guard, all while you know you have to kill Vlad. That is not going to be easy. And that's one of the reasons why Vlad's an interesting pick. It doesn't make a Vampire Army invulnerable. It doesn't make that pick infallible. But it's an interesting pick, and it forces your opponent to decide how they're going to deal with your army. Because people's typical first response is, well, I'll just kill the vampire leaders, and then, ergo, the vampire army dies. Well, when Vlad's around, that's sometimes easier said than done. In fact, it's the case with most of the vampire lords. It's easier said than done. All of their armies are very vulnerable if their lord dies, and for that reason, vampire lords tend to be very survivable compared to a lot of other lords. Now, there could be some exceptions, like Helmut Gorst and a corpse car. You know, he's a pretty easy target. But, you know, hey... Gorst is the ghost with the most, right? <laughs> anyway, so we're coming down to the final phases of the battle. There's really nothing left on the ground for the Vampire Coast. They're just biding their time for a moment, even though they're losing leadership, uh, so that they can um, fire off the rest of their ammunition, which is now complete. And what you're going to see is the Vampire Counts player uh, attempting to cycle charge his way to a victory. Again, this is going to make some of you angry. This is, this is ladder, folks. It just, it is what it is. You, you can't come into something that doesn't force a play style on people and be mad when they don't play that style. They're going to play to the style that they think helps them win. Because uh, this is all about a leaderboard. So I'm going to fast forward, just let you see this part. It's nothing we need to watch over and over again. Obviously the vampire player just sticks together and makes it very difficult. He did lose Vlad, by the way. But the corpse carts and the white kings, the, the varied army build there, left enough leadership that he's able to withstand this Lord Sniping attempt. So, I really like the play from Lord Oblivion here, and some of you won't like it, but I like the play from Fran Carls in the sense that this is the type of stuff you should expect. If you go into a battle and your objective is to win, people are going to pick strategies that they think will help them win. And in this case, taking out someone's leader early in a disruptive sniping attempt, and then leaving them to flail up against a whole bunch of unbreakable units, that's a fair strategy in this. Again, some people aren't going to like it. Air, are you telling people they should go cycle charge and, and snipe Lord? I'm not telling people how to play the game. I'm just trying to call this one <laughs> how it is. And I do hope you all enjoyed it. So, well played by Lord Oblivion. I have some more replays from him. I'm going to record another one because I just I want to talk through this from a latter perspective. Just put a little perspective on his replays. He was kind enough to send it to me. I haven't cast... I don't think I've cast any replays from Lord Oblivion before. If I have, then I forgot. And you, you can feel free to curse me in the comments, Lord Oblivion. But thanks for sending this one in. And then um, giving us a, an interesting demonstration of kind of what happens in quick battle. And an interesting army pick for the vampires here too. Anyway, I got another one for you. If you all enjoyed this, make sure to go down in the comments. Leave a comment. Leave a like. Leave a dislike if you hated it. Feel free, please. And uh, if you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed. Anyway, Air of Carthage signing out for now. I will see you all soon with some more Total War Warhammer 2 action.